Hello and welcome to OOP345NBB. My name is Fardad. Let me put it over here. And open. Oh, <laughs> good. My name is Fardad. My last name is not exact. I was talking to my OOP244 student, talking about being exact, that I put exact over there, but that's my name. Okay, so uh, exact is what I'm going to tell you later. So let's put some spaces. I'll bring it up later. <laughs> okay, my name is Fardat. I, uh, when I speak in English, I don't pronounce my own no name properly. The uh, pr correct pronunciation of my name is Fardot. But when you say, when you talk in English, it becomes Fardat. Okay. It's like your dad is Far. But anyways, so uh, that's my name. Uh, please use that to refer to me. Do not call me Professor. Do not call me Mr. Solimanlu or things like that. Uh, Fardat will suffice. Um, uh, I will be taking care of OP345. As you uh, noticed today, I told you to be here at 12 o'clock. I have a class ending at 12.35 in A building. And I have to beam myself here in five minutes. So uh, I'll, I'll, for now, I'll set it to 12. And I'll see how it comes in. I came like 10, 10 minutes earlier, so it was good. So we'll find out. We'll uh, kind of... Uh, fine-tune it as we go so we know exactly when we're going to start the class, but that's what it's going to be. Uh, I'm going to talk about what we are going to do this semester, how we're going to handle the class, go through uh, um, changes, like major changes that uh, was applied to OP345. Uh, I think you're going to be happy when you hear it. Uh, it doesn't make any difference with the outcome. It's just uh, um, we can be more focused having such a thing, uh, such a system that we have now. Um, the very first thing uh, that we always do at the beginning of each class is the land acknowledgement. So uh, I put this thing up to acknowledge that we actually uh, are at, uh, on a land of the First Nation of Canada. Um, but uh, it's not just putting this thing on to just uh, follow the, the guidelines that they provide in Seneca. Um, um, I had a second had experience. I cannot say firsthand. Uh, some of the relatives actually went to the, uh, to the places that they dealt with First Nation and their problems and stuff like that. Um, Study about it. Uh, understand it. It's an important thing to know um, what they have gone through and uh, what we are taking for granted now. So, yes. Let me see if it actually. Wait, 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 wait. I want to see why is it not going from the. That's better. It's a little too loud, I think, but it's okay. So let's start. Um, we are um, I'm just going to go through 
all the steps that I have over here go through uh, different parts of the uh, coast derivatives and tell you what it is. Uh, so the online session, this subject is done as flex, which means flexible. You can sit at home and join the session via big blue button, or you can come to class and be present. I suggest, uh, uh, if you can, be here in person. Um, believe me, human touch is something that you cannot replace it with anything else. And uh, being present in class kind of make you obligated to um, not hide and actually participate. It's a good idea to come. But if you cannot, you can always join through online session that we have or big blue button. So you click on big blue button, you follow the uh, follow the uh, Uh, the instructions and uh, you can join online. There's one catch. You cannot un uh, join online without a microphone. You will join online. You will choose microphone. I do not accept listen only. I ask students, for, uh, I, I, I do a full du duplex thingy with my class, which uh, if you've been my OP244 IPC students, you, you know that I ask questions and you answer and I go to the next person and I keep going like that and I continue. Okay, so that's how I teach. And the people who are on the blue button, there is actually a random tool that I think somebody's name is gonna come up. You have to activate your microphone and talk, okay? So you must have your uh, microphone set and you join, not listen only, but with microphone. If you are joining with listen only, I need to get a uh, prior notice telling me for that in the next session, I will be joining Listen only because I'm at the hospital at my something something and I cannot answer questions over there, therefore I'm going to join the class like that. Fine. But those are exceptions, okay? You mu and if you don't know, if you, don't, if you cannot find a microphone to join with, then please come to the class, okay? Uh, uh, if you are with your friend at a remote place joining with microphone, you have to have a headset. Because if you have two computers with microphones, then one will get feedback from other, and we're going to have a feedback loop going. So if you are joining with a friend remotely, you must have headsets, which means you cannot broadcast, the, you cannot have the, uh, the, the audio coming out of the speakers. What else? Yeah, I'll be asking random questions. So. Essentially, what, what, when you join online, this is what you're going to see. We're going to launch it. And after you launch, you're going to say join session. And then you select microphone. You're going to click on allow. And you say one, one. Two. two. If you this hear yourself, it means you're connected. If you don't do that, it means you talk, I cannot hear you. So you go join audio, and you join. And you immediately mute yourself. OK? So when I ask you a question, you unmute, and we keep going. You're going to have a list of users coming on one side. And uh, what I do when I ask questions, I simply go over here and say, I'm going to say, select the random user. OK? There is no user, so nothing's going to be here. But if somebody's name coming up at the screen, it means it's your turn to answer the next question. OK? And if I hear, call you, and I see you don't reply, that means uh, yeah, that's a big no-no for me. I'm not going to do anything, because it's college. You're not kids. But uh, uh, it's a very bad impression on your, on your teacher. So uh, be aware of that. Uh, that's uh, the online delivery that we have in a flex thingy. OK? Uh, questions on that? Suggestions? Objections? You're good? All right. So that's that. Very simple and straightforward. It's not very difficult. And then after you're gone, it's a good idea to actually end the meeting. You're going to go leave meeting. I'm going to go end the meeting for all. And session and the sessions will be recorded on Big Blue Button as well. I'll do it as I'm doing it right now. 
And it's not flex that I'm doing the recording. Uh, I record all my less lectures. I've done it for decades. So it's um, if you go on YouTube, type Fardad OP244 or OP345, you'll see all the lectures are going to come up with playlists. It's not something new. Um, that's that. In-class notes. The in-class notes are going to be on a repository in the OP345 organization. So you, you get your study notes from OER. You know that. You've done that in IPC and OP244. Same way you go through OP345 with all the things that we have. So uh, um, the in-class notes are going to be on GitHub. Here it's going to be. And uh, Every time, anything that I do, I do live coding, okay? So when I'm uh, teaching, you're going to see I code. And I make mistakes. I make good ones, too, like like holy mother of mistakes. And we'll try to fix it together. If I can fix it, good. We fix it. We all learn how to debug it. If we don't fix it, uh, I'll just go home and find out what was wrong with it, and I'll send you a message to do. I am. One of those people who are not ashamed of making a mistake because it's, I, quite frankly, I think it's stupid that you think you're a programmer that doesn't make a mistake. That's kind of a paradox. It doesn't happen, okay? Uh, and you need to learn that. You need to know that making a mistake is very okay. You should make a mistake. Uh, first of all, if you, don't, if you knew how to do it, you weren't here, right? <laughs> you're here because you want to learn something, right? And you make mistakes, you learn how to debug and could decode and stuff like that. So. Um, it's very normal. You'll see. It's we're going to go through it. So as soon as I do something over here, immediately I post it. Okay. So it's going to go. So essentially, anything I do in here, you'll see that I'm going to open my Visual Studio. I don't think I need to create the things in front of you. I'm going to do it now. I'm not going to do it again. Um, create console applications. Something you need. I think you should be able to do by two semesters that you're here. So uh, I'm going to create a console application, create a new project, just to show you how I do it. Uh, I'm going to go next. And I'm going to go to the OOP345. And because, uh, oh, actually, we are two of them. OK, so in here, I'm going to create a new folder. We are NBB. And inside NBB, I'm going to select the folder. And in here, I'm going to say 01 September 3rd. No play. I'm going to place the solution and everything in the same directory because I don't want extra directories to get created. And three years later, I'm going to have my solution created. Then I'll start writing the code. I want you to pay attention to how bored you are right now. And I'm going to tell you something about it. Oh. And you see, first mistake in a two line code. Okay, I compile and run it. Three years later, it compiles it. Oof, we get the output. We're good with that. And what I'm going to do, I'll go to the uh, the repository, and then I'll right click on the thing. Actually, let me just go work even more back than that. I'm going to say commit. And I'm going to say add everything. When I say add everything, as you see, it only adds what I need. That's the dot git ignore working in GitHub. It ignores the garbage executables, all the temp, temp files that Visual Studio has, and only commits the ones that we have. So I'm going to say hello, uh, 345 NBB. And I want to say commit and push. And three years later, it's going to be right up there. 
And if we go to that place over here now, well, we'll see that NBB is created. September 3rd is right there, and this is the program I wrote. We good? Everything's going to go up there. So for all those people with notebooks and computers who come to class, we as human beings, you've heard it before, sorry for sounding like a broken record, we as human beings have one language processor, not two. And whoever says I have two, you're lying. You don't have it. You think you do, you don't. Okay? So while you're taking notes on your computer, you'll miss what I just said. Okay? Writing a note on a paper is a completely different thing. That's muscle memory. It's a different thing. First of all, when you are writing on a paper, you are translating all the stuff in an analog way so it gets committed to your memory. In, in the computer, you're just doing this, and you don't remember what you typed. And note taking on these won't work, my opinion. I'm not forcing you anything, I'm just giving you pure science. Go and, and study about it and read some papers about it, and you'll see. Pay attention to the code, take notes, fine. Um, and uh, uh, you, you can have your computers, but there's one rule. If I see one person smiling at their screen, everybody loses their laptops and electronics. Okay, I don't have time to uh, uh, pinpoint somebody out of the classroom. I simply, I'm not going to say even who was it, I'm going to say all laptops closed. You can later on find out who did it and blame it, not my business. Okay, but one person does that, one person looks at the cat coughing fur balls in a class, everybody loses their electronics for that day, okay? And you'll see it's gonna happen many times. So careful, always bring that notebook with you. It's good for your health, trust me. You're gonna, writing things are good, is good, trust me. Anyways, so that's that. That's where all the notes are gonna go. <sighs> Course information. The addendum is up here and brings us some important information. For example, we only have four quizzes throughout the semester, not ten. Only four quizzes, approximately every two weeks, something like that. We only have four workshops, no projects. That's it, okay? So you can focus on learning. There are lots of sample stuff on the repository that you can go take a look at it. And by the way, if you can read this, you know magic. Let me just, <laughs> I, I, it's, I don't know whose idea was to make it, uh, is it that? No. I'll, for some reason, mine shows much better. Let me just see. If, this one? Okay, let me see where, uh, left, 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 left. Yeah. <laughs> this one? Okay, does it work? Yeah, it did actually. Thank you. I didn't know. Anyways, so and let's see. Yeah, so plus, 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 plus. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna scroll it to left right here or somewhere. I don't know. Anyway, so you you see that? Download it and read the PDF. Okay. Anyways, we have uh, lectures and labs as we go through, so you know exactly what your quiz is when your uh, workshops are, everything, your test one is worth 30%, test two is worth 40%, 70% of your mark is based on your tests. I'm not gonna make the tests vigorous, but it shows if you learned something or not. So if you wanna copy that workshop from someone, by all means do it. You're gonna shoot yourself in the foot because you cannot do it in a test. Your choice. Uh, we kind of wanted to try to force the students to study and I think the more it's like you're bringing up a child, the more you handhold them, the less they learn. So we're trying to work with you like adults. We'll give you what you need to do. It's your job to go and study. If you don't want to study, don't. You're going to fail in the tests and you're not going to go anywhere. So please do. And OP345 is not OP244. There are tough stuff happening over here. Okay, we're going to talk about how to run a program that runs in five sections parallel to make things faster. So it's not, it, we, we, we're gonna learn algorithms that blows your mind away. Things that, you, syntax that is completely like 
what the heck, like is that a function? Things like that. So you're going to see things like that that are new. So if you don't practice it, you cannot do it, okay? My tests are, and quizzes are all, all done on Blackboard in the computer, in a, in a class, in here, in the lab. So your lab is your test. So the day we have a test, I'm going to tell to the other class that the other class have a test, and I'm going to leave that class half an hour early so I can come over here and we can have the full class or full time of the class. When you are doing the, the lab, everything's going to be blocked down. You cannot do it, open anything other than your uh, Blackboard and Notepad++. I'll, sh I'll give you a sample test, uh, a mock-up test, to come to the lab and try it and see how it works. Learn how to work with it. Okay, so you open your uh, uh, test at left side, you open Notepad++ at right. Why Notepad++? Because when you save the file with .cpp with Notepad++, it gives you IntelliSense. It completes your thing, so it helps you write the code. And I don't really, I, you're at the stage that I want to see if you understand the logic. Uh, misspelling things and forgetting a curly bracket and stuff, I don't care. You get the full mark for it. What I don't except is not following instructions. And I do that right from IPC 144. It's not like because you are OP345. And that brings us to this. <laughs> you have to be exact, OK? When I tell you the code that you're giving to me on the test, it has to be indented properly, submitted properly, so it's syntax highlighted. If you don't do that, I don't mark it. Easy, OK? I give you the mock-up test, I give the YouTube video, shows you exactly how things work, so you know exactly what you do, and it makes your life easier. You're using Notepad++ to write your code, you copy the whole thing, you're going to go to the question, you say submit code, poof, done. It automatically does everything for you. But if you write a sloppy code, what does it mean? I never wrote the code in my life, that's what it means. Okay. So you just have to write your code properly. I'm not, again, let me correct myself. I don't want perfect code. I don't want perfect indentation. I want something when I look at your functors over there, I understand what the heck you're doing over there. I don't have to decipher it, okay? If you don't write a code that is clear to read, I'm not gonna read. I don't have time. I have hundred students, if I want to literally go and decipher your code, I'm not going to be able to mark anyone. So write it properly, you'll be good, OK? And every single little thing you do in your test gains mark. Every, I'm writing you to write, I'm asking you to write a function. Only your return type and your arguments are correct. You get marked for that, partial thing for everything, OK? as long as you give me something that I can read, okay? That's all. Uh, that's that. Follow the instructions. And I always mention that to my students. Uh, uh, this is not uh, an approximate science. Oh, yes, sir. There is a written test. You're writing programs like crazy. By hand, no. Actually, I have to fight for it because they are telling that on the paper, I, I, have, I have not done a paper test since 10 years. I don't want trees to get chopped off because I want to. I don't want that. We have the tools for it. I can proctor it. I'm going to set that thing up. I'm going to record every single computer while you're doing the test. So by all means, test me. Try to cheat. Okay? I'll get you and, you'll, and we'll, we'll go to that. I'll, I'll come to it soon. Okay? So... Uh, we have the tools over here to, to monitor everything perfectly. And when the test starts, you log in and all the cell phones come over here. All the watches come to the thing. You don't, you, you don't carry any electronics. It's your brain and a computer in front of you. If you are allowed to have a reference sheet, I will allow you to have one. We'll see what happens. Yes. Huh? No. There you have Internet connection will be shut off. You don't have access to any internet. So again, I don't, want, I don't want, if you have done the workshop, when I ask you to do something, you know the ballpark of it. You just write the logic you wanted to write, and then debug. You get the full mark for that. If I see your attempt is towards the right direction, that's what I want. If you understand the logic, that's what I want. 
I don't want you to be precise. It's a test in an hour and a half. How can any human being write a perfect thing? If that's the case, you're Elon Musk doing SpaceX now, right? We are here to learn. You are supposed to make mistakes. Workshops, I'm going to put it under microscope. I'll look at it. But tests that you have half an hour to do to write a program for me, I just want to see if you knew what you were doing. You're never right. You don't have to be right. That's all. OK? Yes, sir. Is the test whole workshop? The question is that if for the test, is it the whole uh, thing that we are supposed to write? Or pieces of code? OK. It's, <laughs> it's not IPC warfare. I'm not going to give you fill in the blanks. I'm not going to do that. OK? So you are writing full working things, snippets. It's possible that I give you a, a class, and I'm, I'm going to say, write the move constructor for this. Write the, the uh, move, move, move constructor for this, something like that. I'll move assignment for this. And I see if you can write it or not. The whole class is functional. I just want to see if you could do the move assignment. I want to see if you could, you know which part you can reuse. So the code that I ask you to write, it's six lines of code. But it needs a lot of knowledge of 400 lines. So you know you are not writing humongous amount of code. You are writing six lines that does the work. Okay, those are the things. And if I am at to ask you to write a complete program, I'm going to just write some, give you something like we have five billion numbers in an integer array. Write a, a program that runs on a computer with 16 CPUs and do it in parallel. The code for this, it sounds very whoo. The code with SDL algorithms is what? Six lines of code? It is a main, full, fully functional thing, but it's not a big thing. So I'm not going to be cruel. I'm not going to ask you to write humongous amount of code. OK, I'm just going to ask you to write uh, a piece of code that identifies if you, if you know your things. Or, OK, yes, madam. I didn't do it. I don't know. That's one of the things that I have problem with uh, the students. You will know the quiz when I know it. Why does it matter what type of a question you have? Can anybody tell me? If I give you multiple choice or write a short program, who cares? Whatever it's the question, and you know the answer to it. It doesn't make any difference if you are doing Like, when I do multiple choice, everybody fails. That's my experience. When I do fill in the blanks, everybody fails. Because nobody, I, I don't, I'm not going to say, which one of these, these things are animal? Elephant, car, building, or a shovel? I'm not going to give you answers like that. And even that, people choose the shovel, trust me. Okay? Multiple choice is a very bad thing. Okay? And when I give you multiple choices, not four options, I'll give you nine of them. So it takes more time to go through every single one, and it's so difficult. One of them is missing a dot, and that's the answer because it's missing the dot. So it's very difficult and easy to make mistakes. I'd rather ask you to write short pieces of code. It's more difficult to mark, but I can identify what you are doing. So I'll try to be as accommodating as possible, but I'll tell you what the format is when I wrote it. I didn't write anything. I don't know. When the time comes, and we do things in class, and I'm going to say, wow, this is a good question. I really literally say in class, this is a good question for the quiz. And I'll do it. And actually, let me tell you something. I did a test once. It's, it was like 15 years ago. I said, let's give the questions to students the day before. Not a percent difference with people who have passed the subject. They had the questions the day before. They came to the test. The, the percentage of people who failed was exactly the same as they didn't have the questions. They know the question, literally. Question one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the questions you're supposed to. Literally, they had the question. The next day they came, the exact same number of people failed. It is impossible to learn computer programming in a day. And if you memorize the code, you're going to screw it up so bad that it's 100% sure that, that you will memorize it. Unless you have an identic memory, therefore, Elon Musk, SpaceX. Right? <laughs> All right? Um, I, I, I never 
I had never in 25 years of teaching had one appeal, not even once. So I'm very fair with my students. Not a, once in my life a student came and said, this person did this and that and I got an unfair mark. Okay? And none of the marks are final. Anything that you get, you can always debate it. I'm not going to say, you got it, that's your mark. No. If you think you did something that I didn't understand, especially three, four, five, you may do something that I don't even know. And you tell me this is right. And I'm checking it. I say, oh, yeah, you're right. It is right. I didn't know that. So you get your mark. So you can debate any mark. And you will know. I like your alienware. Is that an alienware? Or, or just an alien on it? Oh, I thought it's alien because I love the alien pair of computers. I thought that's the one. This is, this is what I'm saying. I just noticed that. Uh, this is what I was talking about. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, so that's that. Uh, yeah. Uh, the conditions that you pass the the subject was very, very simple and straightforward. I'm just, I'm not going to bring that microscopic thing over there. I'm just trying to, I'm gonna, just going to try to tell you how it is done. So workshops 20%, quizzes 10%, midterm 1%, test 40%. 20% of the work is not proctored, which means you're doing it at home. The rest of it you are doing in front of my eyes. So uh, if you want to copy the workshop, be my guest, do it. The rest, you're not going to be able to make it. You have to do it yourself. You have to practice. <clears throat> Quizzes we talked. And please, don't come with the quiz to me and say, I got, I got, 70, I got uh, 90% in this. Give me that 1%. 90% of 1%? I mean, like, seriously? I mean, like, that's like 0.01%. doesn't do anything to your mark. And I had students coming to me fighting for a mark, and they had like 82 and they were fighting for me to get 3% more. It became 85. It was still A. And I'm like, it's not going to make any difference. You got an A. I give you more. It, I want that on my transcript. It's not on your transcript. It's on Blackboard. It's going to go away. So please, come and bargain for something if it makes any difference. If it makes difference, sure. But if you see, OK, I already got a B, B plus, And if I do this, it's not going to make any difference. Just. If you want to let me know that I made a mistake, please do that. I ha I'm happy. OK, but yeah, anyways. Um, weighted tests, weighted average of tests, what does it mean? When I say you have to pass the subjects when you have weighted average of test one and test two, test one is 30%, test two is 40%. It means the mark you got in test one multiplied by three divided by 70 plus test number two multiply by 4 divided by 70 should be more than 50%. If that's the case, you pass. OK? That's weighted average, if you don't know what it is. OK? It means the one that has more mark weighs more. OK? The one that has less weighs less. OK? So whatever mark you got, that's the weighted average between the two. Um, and the whole average of the thing should be more than 50%. OK? Easy breezy. So that's the addendum. Please go through it, see if I made a boo-boo anywhere. And, I'll, uh, and if there's anything unclear, I'll let you know. GitHub organization, you've already seen it. The OP345, everything's going to be there. Workshops, everything's out there. Material to read and sample codes to see, they're all there. OK? Especially, my, I put my notes over there, too, so it's there. Every single thing that is going to get recorded, you're going to have the link for it. So you know session one, that was the link. If you see I forget, just ping me on, on Microsoft Teams. If far that you forgot to upload the recording to YouTube, and I'll do it. OK? That's that one. Seneca how-to videos for CC pub routes code core subjects. OK. Uh, you have a workshop zero that no one else has. Sorry. You have to go through it and uh, prepare your computer. If you have a Mac computer, do only the Mac parts. If you have a, a Windows computer, go through the Windows parts. 
the parts that are Linux, they work on Mac or Linux. Same way, if you open on the terminal, everything that you go on Linux works on Mac too. I am not a Mac person, okay? Therefore, uh, when you have problem with your code, I can help you with your code, but I cannot help you why Xcode is not compiling it, what Visual Studio is. I do not know, okay? I cannot help you with hardware or software specific to Mac, okay? That I can't help you. I'll, I'm not going to say I'm not helping you. I'll try to. But if you have problems like that, I, uh, this is a uh, Visual Studio subject, Windows-based subject. So, uh, Subject online information. So this is essentially the uh, contract that you have with, with all the stuff that we are teaching and how the things are going to be set up. Uh, wow. Modes of evaluation. That's why we have the addendum. So. Whatever you have on addendum supersedes this one. Remember that. Anything that we have on addendum supersedes this one. Um, something very important. I go with the, with the pace of class. Whatever the class's pace is, I go with that one. Which means if I am on certain topic of OP345, and I see classes not getting it, I may stay on it a little longer. Or if I go on a specific point and I see everybody got it, I may go a little faster. So we may fall behind or go faster than what the schedule says, but uh, it's the class feedback. And you see we have this <clears throat> talking stick. How many of you have ever been my students except this channel? Two? Wow, this is a change. Good. Oh, I just want summer, I go away, and nobody's my student anymore. Anyway, so uh, we have a talking stick, okay? Which means whoever has it answers the next question. And then after answering, passes it to the next person, and it goes around, okay? Um, you don't have to answer. If you don't answer, you simply say, pass, and give it to the next person. If you hear the pass three times, you can come to rescue, okay? If I ask a question, the first person doesn't know, second doesn't know, third doesn't know, then you can say, I know, can I just answer it and be done with it? We can do that, okay? This helps, uh, uh, once I did, once I did, uh, I said you can give it to whoever you want, and that created chaos, so I'm not gonna do that anymore. So it's gonna go by sequence, or sometimes I randomly go put it in front of someone who's actually looking at their cell phone. But uh, we'll see what happens, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so. That's that one. Uh, so that's how we work through the, the questions that we have inside the class. Uh, office, uh, faculty information, all here. So in here, you have a phone number. That phone number is actually here. It's my team's phone number. OK, so when you call, team's going to ring. All right, there is one rule for the teams. That's respecting the dot which is this dot. If it is available, be right back or away, by all means, send me a call me. You don't need to book an appointment. If you see I'm available or it's right away, call me. Either I'm at the computer and answer you, but those type of call, be ready for I'm gonna say I'm having lunch or something like that, or I may not answer because I'm not on my computer, okay? So I don't have office hours. You, I'm going to um, up to date, make, have my schedule up to date on Microsoft Teams, and you can simply book an appointment with me, see when I'm not busy, and do it. I put a video for you on that to tell you how things are done and how you are doing, how you can actually book a meeting. So essentially, and if I miss a call, I see I have a missed call, and I'm going to give you a call back. Um, it's as easy as that, okay? Um, and if we can talk, we can talk. But if you want to talk to me, book an appointment with me. So you essentially going to online office, <laughs> yeah. And that's oh, this is good. This is the place with the general chat thingy. I'm gonna put a welcome message over here so you can start a post too. This is where all you guys are gonna be. Uh, it's a discussion. I have ZBB and NBB, so all the students are gonna be here. If you have a question, anything troubles you, you can post it publicly over here. And if any of you can answer, please be my guest. Answer it. Help others. 
Okay? If you have problem with a piece of code that doesn't work, you can post that code snippet over here and ask people to help you. But don't put, don't upload the entire project or or workshop. Say I have problem with my workshop, fix it. Don't. Okay? Seek for help for problematic part of your code, and everybody can do it. It's a collaborative thing. We need to learn to do that. Uh, so that link brings you up over here. I actually send a message right now with a code that you can join. Proudly yesterday, I actually wrote a PowerShell code uh, that uh, adds everybody automatically. And I, by mistake, I added students from last semester. And I, <laughs> so I removed them quickly. I'm going to try to add you again uh, through your email list. Um, but if before that you want to join, I put a code over there for you to actually add the code and, and join if you want to. And um, uh, I don't know if I, wow, except no. There you go. So many people are joined, have joined already. There we go. So yeah, we're going to have uh, a welcome message coming up on the, on the Teams. And uh, um, anything that's going to happen goes on the Teams. And you get, you get an announcement over there, too. So check it uh, more often. Um, for booking an appointment, I think I have a video already on your uh, notes repository. So if we go back over here, there you go. Meet using scheduling assistant, and that brings up the YouTube video that I have for it. I'm explaining over here. So that was in an IPC 144 class, and I had the lab assistant, so we kind of had the pretend thing. He had his computer, I had my computer, and I showed how to book an appointment on Microsoft Teams using scheduling assistant. So go on that, take a look at it, see how it's done. It's very simple. You literally, if three of you want to have a meeting with me, you book an appointment, you add the name of everyone to the scheduling assistant. Scheduling assistant gives the free time of everyone. You select one that is free for everyone, and you create a request for a meeting. And I either accept, deny, or do something. So I'll, and uh, please don't book an appointment for, for three minutes from now, OK? Give me a couple of days to be able to get to it, OK? You, I give uh, response time 48 hours. It's got to be much quicker than that. We're going to have lots of discussions at like 11 o'clock at night. Things like that happen all the time. And I'll see you like, because when, um, um, uh, yeah, so you do like that. You book an appointment. But, uh, and what is the messaging preference for me? It's not email. I don't check my email for student, uh, student emails. So don't, if you send me an email and say, Farda, I have a problem with this, it means you never listen to me in class. OK? Anything you want to tell me, send a message, private message on Teams. Just go on the message, type Farda, my ugly face is going to come up. Just click on it and put your, put your message over there and send it to me. I see your message. I replied like that. We have the history of our conversation. And as many times, when we are doing, and I'm going to say, I'm free right now. You want me to open up a chat right now? You would say, yes. Immediately, we make a call. I'll share my screen. I'll get your stuff from the repository, and we'll be done with it. So things like that happen all the time. You will see. OK? Our weekly schedules are here. I posted my schedule over here. I'm going to probably, I don't know. I, have, I don't know why you need it. but. You have your own schedule. Why you need mine, I don't know, but I put it over there for no reason. Anyways, what weekly schedule is here with all the things that we are supposed to do. It really literally goes to uh, our lab is uh, today is Tuesday, right? So you have your final test on week 14. Uh, this semester, Seneca uh, classes end halfway. Halfway through the way. I think it's on a Wednesday or a Thursday. Classes end. Is Wednesday. So if it was after that, then your test would have been on week 13. OK? So be aware of that. So you're good. I think you're going to be in here. But I'm going to check for the other class and see if they have it. They might have it earlier. Uh, quizzes marks are going to come up over here. So you're going to see quizzes become available. And we'll do the quizzes. Um, I'll check the IP number for the quizzes. If you don't, if you don't do the quiz from a lab, from home, it's considered cheating. Be careful. Okay, 
You cannot say, oh, oh, I cannot go. Let me just do the quiz. Even innocently, if you want to do that, just to do the quiz, don't. Okay? If you miss a quiz, you have to let me know. I'll rearrange for you to do it in a test center or something. Okay? But you have to be here, present. Do it from here. And uh, uh, when I connect to the uh, teacher's insight, it gives a list of all the students. I simply download that and save it so I know exactly who was in class and doing it. So be aware of that. Mid and same thing for midterm final. If you are a student with accommodation, you need to let me know for every single thing if you want to do it in a test center. If you are, uh, if you're not, if you don't know what that means, it means you are not. So don't think about it. But if you are a student with accommodation, you have to let me know, and we set it up, and then you go to the test center and you do your test stuff over there. If you, if you are. Um, workshop zero. First of all, did I put everybody to sleep? In coma, kinda, right? Yeah, no, no, don't be sorry. This is boring. I like this is like the, the first class is. I hate the first class. Okay, first of all, I'm on my nerves because no matter how long you're teaching the first class, you're always nervous. Oh my God, what am I going to do? It? So that's that's me. And number two, you're talking about all these regulations. How am I supposed to do it in class and stuff? Boring as hell, but but it's something we have to go through. Workshop zero. Like, what's workshop zero and how you're going to do it? Uh, you want to have a break before we continue? Anyone? It's 47. We have, uh, yeah, we end at 1.30. No? No break? Okay. I have my coffee. <laughs> Pardon me? Oh, do I need a break? Um, if this is my first day, and I'm going back to back from, from 9 o'clock. I'm coming back. Uh, I'm OK. Uh, do I look like I need a break? Oh, I'm sorry. This is the first days like that, I, and I and I had a non-teaching summer, so I'm getting used to it again. And probably I'm going to lose my voice in the first sec because I get excited and I shout in class. And this happens. My apologies if I if I look out of energy. I'm going to do some jumping jacks and get better. Anyway, so uh, that's that. Um, yes, madam. Do I extend times? Always. On Can I not do? Like, is it possible that somebody say, I'm not going to extend the time by request? You're going to say, like, I don't know, I had an accident and I need to do the workshop and I need two days extension. Why shouldn't I? Of course I do. I, I do it even if it's not for an urgent thing. Like, if you see you're in trouble and you have difficulty understanding certain things, you ask for an extension, it's OK for me. But, but don't make it a habit. If I see you are doing it for every single thing, then I'm saying, you need help. You have to go to find some tutor or something. But, but uh, occasional stuff, I have absolutely no problem. One of the things that I believe, if somebody's asking for extension, they're actually doing their workshop. Why shouldn't I give you an extension if you want to do your workshop? Right? Doesn't make sense. But if I see you are doing it for every single one, it means, yeah. But sure, no problem. I, I will do that. There's no problem, madam. Um, again, based on, uh, uh, and I, I actually post something how to ask for an extension. Okay? And again, you have to be exact. So I'm going to say to ask an extension, you have to tell me the number of days you want the extension. You have to tell me what is the name of the workshop and things like that. And when I say number of days, I mean number of days based on the submitter program. So when you do submit, it gives you the due date. You have to look at that due date and say, I want six days of extension. You tell me that. You cannot tell me, I want an extension till next Sunday. That doesn't work for me. It means I have to see what is your extension, then do the math. Then I, I'm not going to do that. I, I need, you have to make my life easy, and I'll make your life easy, OK? Just seriously, because it, this admin stuff takes a long time. It wastes everybody's time. So just follow the, the, uh, um, the, the guidelines, and you're fine. And um, extensions like that, extensions, thing, things like that, don't put it in a public message. Send me a private one. Like I ask you, okay, don't like so my mother was sick and not everybody knows your mother was sick. Don't do that, okay? Uh, send me a private one and, and even if I don't get it on time, I'll make sure that you're okay. 
Don't worry about it. Um, I'm going to pause for this. When the tests are done after a week after the test is over, you will have access to the right answer, one version of a right answer. And that gives you everything that you need. You know exactly what you went wrong with it. And if you see something you have done is right and I made a mistake, please tell me and then you get your mark. There is no question about it on anything. Especially when we are doing quizzes and stuff. I'll give you some uh, answer instead of encapsulation. You write, write encapsu en encapsulation, something like that. And you don't get a mark for that, right? You contact me. I'll see you made a boo-boo, and I'll, and I'll give you your mark. Okay? So don't worry about that. These things you, you, can, you can always go through. So I was talking about workshop zero. Um, now, how many people... Not that you went on GitHub and on a, on a website. My question is, how many of you know actually what Git is? OK, that requires me to give you a little story about it. You know who Linus Torvald is? Who, how many people know who's Linus Torvald? Seriously? See, that's what I don't like. How many people know who's Taylor Swift? See? Linus Torvald is a person who I think has more impact on our, on our, on our world. Like, he is the creator of Linux. Think about it for a second. He, like, a huge majority, huge majority of all the servers in the world are running on Linux now. My car is working on Linux now. And he is the creator of it. And he made it open source, which means he created it and said, everybody can contribute to it. You, you can, you, everybody can have access to the source code. And it got better and better. And it went so bananas, he couldn't take care of the contribution of people to the Linux platform. So he said, the heck with it. The genius that he is, he said, I'm going to write an application that takes care of collaboration. They called it Git. So Git is essentially. Uh, a code repository that remembers everything you have done to your code. So it's like a Dropbox. I, um, like, I'm like, ah, when I say that. It's, it's, Git is essentially a code repository. It's a database for code or anything that you can put your stuff in it and tell to Git, remember how it was now. Remember how it, how it was two seconds ago. Remember how it is. And you keep adding like that. And then six months later, you can say, what was the status of the code six months before, right before I was going to the washroom? You can actually see it. You can see what differences is between that time and now. And more importantly, you can have 10 people to work on the same code in the same way. You can write a piece of code. He can write another piece. She can write another piece. And after they are done, you can merge them all in one code. It's as easy as that. So how, do we, how does it work? How does Git work? And this is the first and last time I'm talking about it. And I had many students coming to me and say, thank you for that, because that's why I got my work job. When in your resume you say, I know, I have knowledge of Git, when they Google your name, your GitHub repository comes up. That's a huge light bulb to hire this person. When you are working on Git, first of all, it shows that you know how to code. Secondly, it, knows, it shows you how you collaborate. And the concept of Git is so broad, broad that they put operating systems on it now. You can act, you have, they have repositories of operating system, and they update the operating system, and through Git, they take snapshots of, of systems and stuff like that. It's so vast that you, you'll see what I mean like when you get to it. So this is how it works. Essentially, Git is a small program that you, you install it on your computer, and you can create a repository on a computer. And you put your code in it, and you add all the code to the repository. And through the .git ignore that I told you, you tell to the repository what files are not important. Ignore these. And every time you make a change to a code, you say commit. Commit means snapshot of the current situation in my Git repository. And you keep doing that over and over and over and over and over. Okay, this is the, 
This is a very simple way of saying. And it keeps track of everything. Now, if you did something that made, was boo-boo and say, oh, damn it, I don't want this. I want to go back to what it was yesterday after lunch. Then you're going to go, hopefully, when you commit it, you're going to say, going to lunch. <laughs> and you commit. So you know that was the time. So you're going to go to that commit, and you can actually revert your code to that. Not only that, you can say, what is the difference between the two? OK? So that's all good and nice. So it keeps track of your code and all the changes in it. But an amazing capability it has is cloning. You can clone a repository. So committing the code, adding and committing, you are dealing with your own computer. You are adding a new piece of code, new file, to a repository. When you commit, you say, take a snapshot of the current situation. And it remembers it on your computer. That's beautiful. Amazing thing is that you can actually clone this repository and put it on a central place on internet. And any place you go, you can clone it back to another computer. Continue your work, commit, and now the two magic words, push and pull. Push is a smart upload. Pull is a smart download. When you say push, you mean commit the changes to the master repository, post that one. And then you go home, now your home version is one behind the one that you had at school, right? You come over here, you say pull. It brings all the changes back to your local repository. You continue your work. You want to submit your code. You go on matrix, you say pull. It brings all the stuff from repository to your matrix account. You do the submission. You make some changes. You push from matrix goes. So it has a centralized thing. This is called distributed programming. Right? Because of, so remember, push and pull between instances of the same uh, Git thingy, uh, repository, and commit and add and stuff like that are all in the local repository. And those are all in your, uh, in that workshop that you have to install all the tools that you need to do this. So uh, unlike all the other students who have this, if you click over here, you will see that it actually comes right down to 11. Well, when you click on your workshop 0, it has a step 12 too. What is the step 12? Creating a private repository for yourself and add me as a collaborator. Therefore, I can push and pull that repository on my computer. So this is the first thing you do. You create that repository. And you don't do your work on a folder on your computer anymore. You do your work on a repository on your computer. Any change, anything you do in OP345, you commit and push and commit and push and commit and push. It does two things. First of all, shows me that you're working. Number two, if you have a problem, all you need to do is an appointment and the URL of your repository. Because I'm a contributor, I'm a, I'm a contributor to, I'm a collaborator, I pull it. We have a, a video call. I share my screen. I bring up your program. I compile it. I fix it. I commit and push it. You bring the two up. You see exactly the diff what the difference was between the two. All you owe me is a reflection. Tell me, I had this problem. You fixed it. And this was my problem. To show me that you understood how I fixed your code. And that's it. OK? Like this. You have no, you, there is no memory stick got long. There is no, my hard drive goes frozen, things like that. Remember, commit, push, commit, push all the time. Okay? Yes? No, workshop zero is preparing your computer and getting knowledge of that one. Workshop, yeah, sure, you can reflect on it too, but, <laughs> but uh, I would like, I don't know, I don't know if actually I got anything till now, but let me just, I'm just going to open up my email. Let me pause there. Yes, it is. You're using a submitter. But OP244 is changed now. So now it's not like that anymore. Now they have to submit it from the lab. So they have to submit it from a lab PC. They cannot submit it from home. No. That's, again, as we go higher, we treat the students as mature people more and more. <laughs> OK? All right? So, but it is submitted. I know students hate it, but. Uh, uh, it's a very good feedback program because I wrote it, I have my bias. <laughs> anyway, so 
Yeah, so, and if you go to farda, dot, not farda.com, sorry. Uh, farda.com is my web, uh, github.com slash farda. Um, I have my, all the pre, I have a few of my previous lectures over there too. And all the code and stuff that I have written in class. So, so that was the end of you over there and you go over here, there you go. So this is the code, uh, an integer stack. And that we have written over here. So all the code is there if you want to take a look at it. It's an open thing for public. You can go take a look at it. And even the recordings of the sessions are there. So um, how I taught at that time, it's all there, templates. Yada, yada. So you click on that, it actually, the YouTube video or whatever video is on there comes up. Uh, I, um, again, so Seneca email for GitHub, what should they use? It, you can have multiple emails. Create it with your own email if you think it's an email that you're going to have. And I was telling to others, to other, uh, and I, you're probably going to remember this. Cat killer is not a good user ID for GitHub. Because when you're a CEO of a company and they see you're a cat killer, it's not a good thing, right? So, so remember, internet never forgets. You are at the stage that you're getting into a professional, you're studying to go into prof a professional life. Choose your names and IDs wisely. Cool dude or beautiful princess would be nice. Doesn't matter. Those are nice. But again, look at yourself when you're 57 years old like me or 58. I don't even know. Like that, when you're like that, you don't want to have, I don't know, breakdancer to be your, your name over there. It's stupid, right? So have something that shows who you are. Uh, probably an abbreviation of your name would be nice. Uh, but remember, um, uh, nobody uh, uh, reads a resume before Googling your name. No one. And when they Google your name, when your GitHub ID comes up, then they're going to be interested to look at your name. And I promise you that. Okay? It's a very important thing. So it's not mandatory for you to do the uh, workshop zero. But if you do it, I can help you. If you don't do it, I can't help you. I mean, like, I cannot, how you want to provide me the code? I cannot. So that's the thing. Um, it's kind of mandatory by, 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 by nature. Uh, any questions? Suggestions? Objections? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, there are plenty of stuff in the organization when you look at it. In the organization, there are stuff. But supplementary stuff, uh, I don't know if I find. The supplementary stuff is the notes that I write in the class. I always tell, tell to students, you know, as soon as I'm finished with my code, make it better. Do a pull request, I'll merge it. Okay? What is a pull request? You uh, clone the, re this, the repository that I have for notes. Obviously, it's a read-only one for you because it's probably you cannot put anything in there. But if you clone it and you fix my code and you do a pull request, I will merge yours. Doesn't matter. If I see you have done it better, I'll merge yours and I'm going to put it in a comment, this is done with this person. So, so those are one of the good things to do, to fiddle with the code that I write in class and try to make it better. As many of the codes, lots of parts of the code that I write, they are not the best because, first of all, I'm doing it here. Secondly, because you are teaching it, you don't want to make it the best. You want it to make it the best understandable code. And those are sometimes two different things. So if you see a piece of code that can be optimized and get, get better, by all means. Okay? Uh, that's that. Any other question? Anything else? What's the time? Yes, question? Oh, you're just stretching. <laughs> like, ah! Okay, yes. When it's required, yes. So it's very possible that I'm going to give you a code and I'm going to say this code is running slow. Optimize it. Okay? Like, and you're going to take a look at my code and I see and I'm running it on two CPUs. So I'm gonna, the question is going to be the following code is written on a computer with 16 CPUs and uh, please optimize it so it goes faster. Take a look at it, and as you see, I'm, I'm, I am breaking the thread into two instead of 16. 
So you're going to optimize it by doing that. Just make it 216 and you're done. So it all depends on what I'm doing. Or I'm going to write a loop and I'm going to, through that loop, I'm trying to search and find somebody, something from, say, uh, some, uh, people were telling me, how do, how do we know how the quizzes are created? That's how. Okay, I'm going to go home and actually take a note out of this. This is a beautiful question, actually. I'm going to give you a code that does a loop and search through a series of names and try to find a match to a phone number. And I'm going to, when we are in STL, Standard Template Libraries Week, I'm going to say optimize this code. And you're going to look at it, oh, it's a loop and a search. I can use this algorithm for it that is provided with C++. You simply make a function call and it runs hundreds of times faster. And that's optimization. Okay, but you will do that, yes. Any other question? Nothing? All right. So the next day you're coming in, we're going to have a, <clears throat> our uh, the first lecture. I'm going to go through uh, week one. Um, take a look at it. Quizzes are not on the, like it, I know some, some profs have their quiz on the material that is coming. I don't do that. Any quiz that you see is on, based on the material we learned, not from what we are going to learn. OK? So that's what the quizzes are going to be. I do my best uh, to, to give you the answer, the answer for the quizzes. I'll give, I'll give my best to give you the format of the quiz at least uh, a night or two before, as soon as I create it. OK? But I don't think it makes any difference. Personally, I don't think. Um, I feel like I'm missing something. We, we started, I usually, especially when we are in the flex class, where you're not supposed to be here, we're going to have double recording, one on the blue button and one on this. You'll be surprised that even though that happens, microphones don't work, recordings get lost, things like that happens. Internet connection goes bananas. Things happen, and, and we don't have a recording for stuff. Don't rely on them. Don't tell me, oh, we have a party tonight? No problem. Tomorrow I'm going to look at the record, watch the recording, OK, instead of going to class. Careful. Sometimes recordings are gone. And don't hold me responsible. Oh, you didn't put the recording up that day. I'm not supposed to. It's just I'm putting it just in case if you want to go do a review. So it is not a, it is not a, a, a requirement. It's just an addition to help you review the stuff. Uh, <clears throat> talking about uh, any other thing that I, I know I forgot something because it's impossible to be this quick and be done 15 minutes earlier when you started 20 minutes late, but any questions? And I'll try to be more energetic in jumping up and down next time. My apologies. Uh, any questions? OK, yes. It's not kindergarten. You, you, nobody's, no, nobody's, nobody needs to come to my class. As a matter of fact, if you know, know your material and you think you can do it on your own, by all means, don't come to my class. Okay? And I'll give you the full mark for it. There's no problem. But the fact that you didn't come to my class is an, not an excuse for a special treatment. Oh, I didn't come to class. That's why I didn't know it. Can you give me the mark for it? Can't happen. Okay? So, uh, Attendance is never required in my class. And I had many good students of mine who were better than me when we were sitting over there. So I had nothing to teach them. If that's the case, then why do you come to my class? OK, so if, if you think it's not doing good for you and you're already at the level, by all means. It would be nice if you come and help others. That means you're a nice person. But <laughs> it's, it's your choice, OK? Yes. Of course. Oh my God. So this is how it happens. Thank you. So you do the test, right? After you do the test, I'll give it a week for all those people who had trouble and because sometimes things happen, right? Somebody has to do the test. I cannot put all the questions and answers up. First of all, each question will have at least six different versions. So the possibility that you get the same question on one of the, on, all the questions the same is one in a million, okay? but. To actually get the questions the same is very low. So I'm very OK with people sitting side by side. But 
after you're done, I'll wait for a week because I don't want the questions up all different versions to come out for somebody who hasn't done it. He was an accident, he was supposed to do it two days later. I wait for a week and after a week, the question gets open. You get a, I actually wrote a rubric program that when I mark your code, I'll exactly tell you what went wrong, how much mark you got, why you lost the mark, and the reason for it. And it's a comment that is attached to every single thing that I mark. So you see that, then you see the correct answer to the question, and, uh, and then you can decide if you want to talk about it with me, okay? Either you want to see how you can make it better, or you think I made a boo-boo and, and get the mark. So, uh, of course, you will, see, you will see all your quizzes, tests, everything, even the final. You will, you will have it uh, accessible to you. There is no problem. It's on Blackboard. It is on Blackboard. Yeah, we're gonna, I'm going to have a uh, um, hell of a time with others on that. But the question was asked about Git and how it works and all the things and how the branches are merged not to create a conflict. The answer to it is that we don't go that deep and we don't want that functionality of, of Git. What we want to understand about it is this, to, to how to... Uh, do simple push and pulls, commits and adds. Uh, um, but if you want to know more, because Git is open, this URL is an open book on Git. If you go up to chapter three, you know more than me. Okay? And I think chapter six is on GitHub. So you can do one and two and then go study six. So you read that book. It's actually very good. It gives you example exactly how Git works. So you're going to understand exactly. And I cannot put enough stress on it. I know it's a C++ subject. People, try to learn Git. It's used in every single level of our industry in every single piece of place. I cannot tell you like how often it's used. And I am extremely involved with it um, in real industry, not Seneca. So I'll tell you, I'm not involved. I, someone very close to me is involved every day. And things that she is dealing with every day, I see, oh my god, if like my students know, knew this. OK? So please, uh, I know it's, this is not a good thing, but learn it. It's good for you. Anything else? Oh, 27. Have a good day. Bye-bye.